Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so in our last lecture we have uh, shown that what is uh, how the total product curve looks like and how using a four quadrant diagram we can uniquely derive total cost curve given a total product curve right so this total product curve or total cost curve see when we are introducing total product curve total product curve is telling what that is giving or that is a reflection of the technology we are using in our production activity right the how much variable input you are using and for by use of that much variable input how much total output you are getting right so that's the thing so now sometimes so we have so we have shown so far whatever total product car that looks like say this kind of thing continuously con so we are measuring variable input in the horizontal axis variable input okay and vertical axis output quantity output this side variable input quantity right and this kind of total product curve we, we got and we have shown that if this is the total total product curve this is sometimes called production function also production function okay function production function means what it is a functional relationship suppose output uh, we are denoted output as say y and variable input say as x. So, we can have say y equals to some function of x that function captures this relationship right. So, that is why it is sometimes called production function because there is a functional relationship exists between variable input and output what we are measuring in that two axis in this diagram right so this is our total product curve and using the four quadrant diagram we have shown that how the total cost curve can be uniquely derived from this kind of technology this total product curve as i told that it's a one sort of reflection of the technology reflection of the knowledge level know how technical know how what we are using to produce this commodity using this input right and maybe some other fixed inputs are there which are in the under the satellite previous condition. So, we are keeping those those inputs at some given level and it is just one variable input vis a vis one output that relationship is captured by this total product curve right. And so, in that case uniquely derived from this kind of technology uniquely derived total cost curve will be say we are measuring total cost here on the vertical axis and horizontal axis we are measuring output be very careful any cost car any cost car total cost car average cost car variable average variable cost car or marginal cost car whatever different cost cars we will draw horizontal axis we will measure always output okay output only okay so in that case we will have this kind of total cost car right we, we have shown and this is short run total cost car as we told because this is the total fixed cost. So, this horizontal line we can tell total fixed cost curve and a parallel of this kind of convex line say this kind of we can tell total variable cost. So, if I add for every output level this plus this will be this much and so on this plus this will be this much and so on right. So, this is total variable cost curve this is total fixed cost curve since total fixed cost is fixed and it does not vary with the output quantity. So, whenever output is this much whatever the total fixed cost at this much output same amount of total fixed cost this much output same amount of total fixed cost that is why it is a horizontal line total fixed cost line. And so, if you if you add total fixed cost plus total variable cost you will get total cost this kind of thing. So, we have we have we have shown how we can uniquely derive total cost curve given the technology represented by this total product curve right okay using the four quadrant diagram in the so we will introduce today that another looking of total product curve sometimes total product curve can be this kind say as usual you are measuring variable input in the horizontal axis and output in the vertical axis and your total product curve may be this kind this is the 
total product curve okay, or production function what we told in the earlier diagram. Okay. When this kind of total product curve is coming, say look at here when we are we, we told that this is the total product curve, okay, marginal product of every additional unit, right? It is always falling, it is a globally concave curve, so it is always falling. Not only that, average product, average product how, how we define output per unit of variable input, right? So, average product is also continuously falling, continuously falling. Right, because average product will be the slope of this, 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 this ray through the origin. Right, at this particular point, average product is slope of this line. At at this particular point, average product is slope of this line, and so on. So average product is continuously falling. But in this kind of instead of if this is the total product curve, look at here marginal product. At this point, slope of this tangent. At this point, slope of this tangent at this point slope of this tangent at this point this is. So, look at here marginal product is increasing until a point and after that it is falling okay. and exactly the same way if you draw average product at this point it will be slope of this line at this point slope of this line this point slope of this line and so on at this point slope of this line when in that way it is going at this point it is slope of this line. So, average product also is increasing up to a point and then it is falling right. So, when so let us try to understand when this kind of total product can curve can come. Look at here in this total product curve we are measuring horizontal axis we are trying to capture the relationship between variable input one variable input which is measured in the horizontal axis vis a vis total amount of output what is measured in the vertical axis right. So, of course, whatever other factors are there those are the under the set of previous condition. So, those factors their quantities kept at some given level right. So, it can happen that for first few as you are say at this point your amount of variable input employment 0. As you are starting this employment of variable input increasing from 0 to here, here to here and so on, it may happen that initially the rate at which you are expanding your variable input output is expanding much more faster rate. That is why for a initial stage your total product car can have this kind of segment, okay. but eventually after a threshold or after, after a point it will fall. Okay. This kind of fall as marginal product is falling no it is called diminishing marginal product. Marginal product is falling for the subsequent or for the additional unit of the variable input right. So, since marginal product is falling it is called diminishing marginal product law of diminishing marginal product. Okay. And in this kind of thing when this is your total product curve. So, here after this point this is law of diminishing marginal product is is ap applicable right, because marginal product after that point marginal product is falling. Okay. But before that marginal product was increasing. Okay. So, not only this segment marginal product is increasing also average variable uh, average product also is increasing. Under which condition that can happen what I told right, it may happen that as you are hiring that your variable factor which is measured in the horizontal axis, okay, the rate at which you are increasing use of that factor, okay, your output may expand much more faster rate. Let us give an example when it can happen. Okay. See, uh, there is a classic example by Adam Smith, Adam Smith, uh, Adam Smith, Adam Smith we have heard right, he is called father of economics okay. and he only give uh, uh, term this market as invisible hand if you can remember. So, Adam Smith has given one uh, beautiful example of division of labor uh, regarding pin production, okay. pin production. Okay. So, how division of labor can uh, can make you get uh, output to expand much more faster rate uh, vis a vis as you are hiring more and more labor. So, let me give you that, that story. Say suppose uh, you are uh, you are hired this room okay, and you are going to establish your pin production workshop in this room right. So, pin to produce pin no it is a metal thing no small metal kind of instrument right. 
pin. So, to uh, that that what is your ingredient? Your ingredient is basically metal wire okay, and usually metal wire are available in the market in roll kind of thing. Okay, the roll. So, suppose uh, when you hire only one lever, what will happen? That lever he has to do the entire uh, all the uh, activities attached with that pin production. What are those activities? Okay, you purchase from market that metal wire, rolled kind of metal wire. First, you have to straighten that metal wire, right? It, it make to be first straighten. Then you have to cut some some specific size. You have to cut right in this this much uh, pieces okay then whatever the cut pieces of that wire is coming one side one this kind of this kind of uh, wires are there right so one end of that wire needs to be sharpened okay and another end there should be a cap metal cap right then pin will pin will be produced right so you hired only one lever so that lever first he is doing first he is stretching okay straight, uh, straightening the uh, the rolled kind of metal wire what you purchase from the market. Then he is cutting those things into this kind of uh, specific uh, sized uh, specific length kind of pieces. Okay. Then he is doing one, one end of those pieces no sharpen sharpen sharpen. Then he is doing another end he is putting uh, that cap one by one to each, each pin. Right? Now, suppose when you are hiring two lever instead of one lever or three lever right what you can do you can engage into division of lever division of lever by that what we are referring means you are segregating levers into certain groups okay maybe one person will only stretch in the uh, rolled metal wire another person will only cut okay another person will only sharpen that one end of that uh, cut uh, wires and two person they are sitting at the end they are just putting the cap because cap putting cap no it may take little bit more time right. So, you are hiring until five labor it will be very easy because productivity of the labor at each stage of this production will be much more than when entire works was performed by only one labor because one person only he is stretching rolled thing only he is stretching another person only cutting okay, and not doing any other work another person only sharpening one end like that. So, they are involved into only one type of work as a result they could do that work much more faster rate right. So, as a result so the within the if this is the way I, 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 I explain the division of labor say until five labor are so, as you are increasing more and more higher from 0 lever to 1 lever, 2 lever, 3 lever and all, you will see that output per unit of lever it is increasing because you are doing some division of lever among themselves, right. See, I am sure many of you have watched that uh, classic movie by that uh, Charlie Chaplin's movie called Modern Times, Modern Times. I am sure many of you have watched that movie. So, you will see that in the factory you know that Charlie Chaplin and two other workers know that there is a long movable kind of tape is there and on that tape that uh, that nut bolt is were there right. So, three workers they are only just tightening that nuts okay? only they are doing that work right. So, you can uh, imagine how much faster they can do eventually that movie it is shown uh, how much faster they are doing that. Ah, it has some negative implication on those particular people they have to be because it is a monotonous work no they are uh, becoming that kind of thing right. So, that is the to make that uh, funny thing into the into the uh, movie uh, movies uh, story right. But the, the, the basic message is that one person is concentrating on different segment of the work vis a vis one person is only concentrating on a specific segment of work the rate at which your production will increase when you are doing this kind of division of labor okay, production will increase much more faster rate. Okay. So, due to perhaps division of labor and similar kinds of other things right you can have a total product car this kind of thing until I until uh, uh, initially uh, total product car 
have a have a convex kind of shape and eventually due to law of diminishing marginal product eventually after a threshold level after a point it is becoming concave ok. So, that kind of so if we have that kind of total product curve ok. So, we can easily see that what kind of total cost curve will uh, will be that time. So, if your total product curve when you are measuring say variable input say x in the horizontal axis and output y in the vertical axis, if your total product curve is this kind ok, your total cost curve of course, you are measuring output in the horizontal axis and total cost in the vertical axis. So, your total cost curve will be this kind ok and definitely it is a short run total cost curve right. This is total cost this is total product curve right. So, this will be short run total cost curve because this is the so this may be the total fixed cost line ok and may be total variable cost curve looks like this right. And if this is the total product curve this will be the total cost curve short run total cost curve no you can easily see using the same strategy what we have used that four quadrant diagram right you can do that. So, using this thing we will now show uh, whatever relationship or what kind of relationship may exist say when your total cost curve this kind right you see that marginal cost at this point is slope of this tangent marginal cost curve uh, marginal cost at this point slope of this thing. So, marginal cost at this point slope of this thing, marginal cost at that point slope of that thing and so on right. So, as you see that as output is increasing why you are measuring horizontal axis and this side total cost curve total cost right. So, as you are increasing your output marginal cost is continuously increasing because this tangential points uh, tangential tangents no they are becoming steeper and steeper right. So, as if we have a uh, continuously rising marginal cost curve kind of thing right. But if this is the total cost curve at this point what will the marginal cost slope of this line this tangent at this point what is the marginal cost slope of that tangent at this point slope of that tangent. So, at this point slope at this point slope of that tangent at this point slope of that tangent. So, you will see that first marginal cost is falling within this segment and then it is increasing. So, as a marginal cost curve is an U shape kind of thing right. So, in economics we usually discuss using typical U shape marginal cost curve ok. So, in this particular case it is upward rising continuously upward rising marginal cost curve. So, this this kind of total product curve if it is you have this kind of total cost curve you have you can derive that uniquely ok. And if this kind of total cost curve you have, you can have an U shape marginal cost curve, right. So, now we will so we have defined in the last class that uh, what is the definition of marginal cost, what is the definition of average variable cost, what is the definition of average total cost, all those things we have defined, right, and average fixed cost. We have also introduced that average fixed cost curve is a rectangular hyperbola, right, because horizontal axis you are measuring output and vertical axis you are measuring average fixed cost. Okay. So, th their product is always constant total amount of fixed cost. So, that is why it is a rectangular hyperbola. Let us try to understand what kind of relationship will be there between average variable cost, average total cost and marginal cost. Okay. So, that we have shown in a diagram at the end of the uh, last uh, last lecture okay, that we will prove today okay, that marginal cost curve should cut average variable cost and average total cost both of their respective lowest point from below. So, let us try to prove that ok ok. So, total cost how much total cost go to the other say different total cost at this point this is the total cost at this point this is the total cost at this point this is the total cost. So, these different points how they are changing due to different values of output level. So, I can tell or we can tell that total cost is a function of output because that depends on if output level is this, this is the total cost, if output level is this, this is the total cost ok. Total fixed cost we cannot claim that it is a function of output because it is fixed cost it remains fixed whatever amount of output you are producing fixed cost will be the same ok. But total variable cost and total cost 
okay, all will be as a function of output only right amount of output how uh, what you are producing according to your total variable cost is de uh, de determined and hence according to that your total cost also is determined right. So, so we can tell that total cost is a function of output that is total variable cost which is also a function of output plus total fixed cost which is which does not depend on output right. Now, total variable cost right total variable cost I can write average variable cost as a function of output into output because how we have defined average variable cost it is basically total variable cost by amount of output per unit of output how much total variable cost the producer is incurring that is the average variable cost right that we have defined. So, this total variable cost I am writing output into average variable cost of course, it will be a function of output plus total fixed cost right. Now, if I take the derivative with respect to output of the both side of this equation. Okay. So, marginal cost how we have defined marginal cost is basically change in total cost due to change in output right. So, basically uh, del total cost as a function of output by del y if we take that will be marginal cost okay change in so marginal cost right so it's a derivative of the output in the in the calculus notation derivative of the total cost due to or uh, with respect to the uh, change in uh, output right so if i take the de derivative in the both side with respect to y so it will be left hand side it will be del tc as a function of y del y that will be del del y the third bracket y into a v c y okay, plus t f c right that. So, this left hand side is basically marginal cost as a function of output right hand side look at here this component when I am taking del del y uh, into y into a v c average variable cost a average variable cost is denoted by ABC, okay. TFC total fixed cost, total cost, okay. Okay, ABC as a function of y. This plus del since total fixed cost is fixed and it does not depend on y, definitely that de derivative will be zero. So del del y of TFC, this will land. So this first component will be what? This will be ABC as a function of output into del y del y 1 plus y into del a v c del y a v c as a function of output this plus 0 this component will be 0. Okay. So, this 0 I am erasing. So, this is the thing right. So, what we are we are getting marginal cost is basically average variable cost whatever it is plus y into change or the derivative of average variable cost curve with respect to output. Now, if we if we plot that in a diagram, suppose we want to measure marginal cost, average variable cost both in the vertical axis and output in the horizontal axis. Look at here, this relationship what we have derived. Okay. This relationship is basically when y equals to 0 that time when y equals to 0 that time this component is 0 that time marginal cost and average variable cost curve are same value are same. So, when y equals to 0 average variable cost and marginal cost both should start from the same point because that same vertical same point on the vertical axis means for the when y equals to 0 what is their value. Okay. Not only that, when this component is 0, that time also these two are same, right, because y into that equals to 0. So, this together. So, if average variable cost curve is basically an u shaped line, look at here, okay. this is your 
total variable cost car. So, average variable cost will be what at this point slope of this at this point slope of this line at this point slope of that line at this point slope of that line at this point slope of that line and then at this point slope of that line. So, it is falling 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 and then start increasing 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 like. Right? So, it is basically if you measure y output in the horizontal axis and vertical axis the average variable cost it will be an u shape kind of diagram right. So, exactly that we are we are plotting here. Okay. So, suppose this is your average variable cost curve okay. and definitely where it is its lowest point where it is attending that point del a v c this is the a v c curve as a function of output look at output we are measuring in the horizontal axis. So, del a v c as a function of output by del y that will be 0 at its this point where that ABC U shaped at we are attending the lowest point. Okay. So, at this point ABC and MC value are same at this point ABC and MC value are same. So, at point A and point B ABC and MC value are same. Okay. Now, so this segment of ABC when ABC curve A to B A to B that segment okay. ABC curve slope is what? negative no it is downward sloping. So, negative. So, when this is negative this value is negative y to in any case positive. So, this y into this negative value this is negative right. So, m c will be whatever the a b c value that minus something. So, so long a b c has a negative slope that time m c will be below the a b c because a b c value minus something right. So, so long so for this segment downward slopic segment of the a b c curve in our diagram a b segment ok. It is basically m c will be below the a b c curve. So, m c curve will be this kind at this point it will be same. Now, look at here for this segment which is upward rising segment right hand side upward rising segment of ABC that segment this thing is positive why to in any case some positive. So, positive into positive equals to this entire thing is be some positive for this segment. So, for this segment when ABC has a positive slope for that segment MC is whatever ABC value that plus something. So, definitely MC value will be above the ABC. M c will be larger than A B C because it will be A B C plus something right. So, M C curve will be this kind. So, what we are getting from the same vertical axis M C and A B C curve are starting this is the A B C curve okay. and this is the M C curve it is both are u shaped. So, M C curve is cutting A B C curve at its lowest point from below from below. Okay. This is this is I hope understood to everybody. So, exactly the same way if we if we have an AC curve okay, whatever the relationship it will be. So, let us say total cost as a function of output is total variable cost as a function of output okay, not total variable cost. I am writing total cost is basically y into average cost as a function of output this average cost means average total cost. Okay. So, if I take uh, derivative from both side. So, left hand side it will be m c as a function of output okay. this will be y this will be this will be a c as a function of output plus y into del a c del y. Okay. So, exactly same sort of relationship what was there between M C and A V C exactly same sort of relationship M C and A C we will get. So, if we plot all those things okay, all those three both average cost or average total cost average variable cost and marginal cost all we are measuring vertical axis and output we are measuring in the horizontal axis. So, we will have three different cost curves right. So, we will have one A C curve it is an u shape ok one a b c curve ok and one m c curve. 
this M C curve is cutting A B C curve at its lowest point, A C curve also at its lowest point. Look at here exactly the same way we can prove that okay, when this segment is negative right that time M C will be below A C that time M C is below A C for this segment that segment is negative. And for this segment when this part is positive that time M C will be above A C M C is above A C for that. So, it is going above right and at this particular when this is equals to 0 that means when it is at the lowest point of the AC okay, that time this is 0 that time MC and ABC are same. So, it is cutting here. Okay. So, this is the relationship between average total cost average variable cost and MC. One more clarity look at here the way I have drawn average cost and average variable cost curve are coming closer and closer as y is increasing. Why? Because average cost minus average variable cost it is basically average fixed cost. Why? Because total cost equals to total variable cost plus total fixed cost. So, if I take both side if I divide by output this is basically average total cost is basically average variable cost plus average fixed cost. So, average fixed cost is average cost minus average variable cost right this we are landing. So, since average fixed cost will continuously falling as y is increasing rectangular hyperbola. So, as y is increasing this gap between average cost and average variable cost curve will be closer and closer. So, they will be closer and closer right this is the thing. Okay. This is average variable cost curve let us stop here and now we will discuss in the next lecture we will discuss that how uh, long run total cost curve uh, average cost curve marginal cost curve how they look like. Okay. Let us stop here. Thank you.